Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another duel between Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Caruana. This time it's not the grand final, but rather quarterfinals of Chessable Masters 2020. Uh, and I choose for you one of the games. Uh, of course, this is one of the mini matches, so um, the players play four games or uh, three games if one of the players get two and a half points or three points uh, then of course is you know win the mini match and two mini matches are enough to uh, being qualified to the semi-finals and here Magnus Carlsen gonna play as white and Fabiano Caruana as black and I choose this game for you because it's very very thematic to so I think it's a very instructive game so without further ado let's see what happened on the board. Magnus Carlsen open with d4. We have knight on f6, c4, e6, knight on f3 and d5. So queen's gambit declined again. Knight on c3 by Magnus Carlsen and a6. So Fabiano Caruana goes for this system. And it's pretty interesting uh, because actually it's very flexible. So white and black can choose what they're gonna play. First, what white can play, very traditional, uh, for example, e3 and after c6 or c5, let's say c6, going for some kind of uh, Meran defense, uh, for example, bishop on d3 uh, and after b5, bishop on d3, c5, attacking the center. This is accelerated Meran uh, with the very early attack on the queen side. So this is possible, of course. Bishop on g5. This is very interesting because it looks like black can actually uh, win the pawn after d takes on c4, a4, controlling b5. So this is not possible. But after c6, that could be interesting. However, this is one of the lines and it's quite popular and it's it's not really great for white. I mean, uh, look at this. After e4, b5, yes, white can jump to b5 and win this pawn. However, black voluntarily uh, gives the exchange. Okay, so we have rook on a8, bishop on b7, and this is considered as better position for black, even, you know, being down the exchange, but it's still, you know, very playable. And these two pawns, advanced pawns, are pretty dangerous here. So most of the games, you know, are drawn or won by black. So this is very, very interesting uh, how this can be played. However, Magnus Carlsen goes for more solid and traditional approach and he just exchange in the center. Uh, we have E takes on D5, Bishop on G5, very, very typical move and Bishop on E6. So for now, this Bishop works as a pawn. However, uh, it cannot be attacked easily. For example, then the Knight cannot jump to G5 because the, the Bishop is over there uh, and also uh, um, it's still better than staying, you know, being stuck on c8. Like sometimes it's happened in Queen's Gambit declined. Uh, we have e3 by Magnus Carlsen, knight b on d7, and now h3. Silent move, but uh, it actually let white to make a space for, for retreating for the bishop. So for example, if the, if the bishop is kicked to f4, this knight can jump to h5, uh, and that would be very unpleasant. So h3 is it's, it's always good. However, Fabiano Caruana doesn't like it and he plays bishop on d6, controlling this diagonal. So it looks like this bishop shouldn't uh, go back to f4. However, we've seen already Magnus Carlsen, he played that very often um, and this pawn can be the strength, not the weakness, by, by, but a strength. It's very unpleasant, you know, to attack the pawn on e6 and here in this position is even worse. Uh, and now we have bishop on d6. So uh, now pre preparing this bishop on f4 and look at this this pawn actually would be very very unpleasant uh, also bishop on d3 uh, let magnus to to castle first and he said in one of the interviews that your position should be also considered as you know how many moves it takes to make the castle okay and then your position can be safe if it's one move or maybe unsafe if it's if it's you know two moves if it's three moves you probably gonna have a loose position because whatever sharp gonna happen your king stays in center it's uh, very very dangerous we have c6 by fabiano caruana and look at this 
all the pawns are on the light square, so uh, now Magnus Carlsen can try to exploit the dark squares. However, there is the, the bishop, dark square bishop over there. What to play then? Bishop on f4, you guessed correctly, bishop on f4. And now, as I said, bishop on f4, that wouldn't be so great because this bishop would be trapped. So probably black would have to play something like g6, but that's weakening at the dark squares um, around the king over there also h4 h5 uh, is possible the knight can jump to e5 so uh, not really greatest idea for black so definitely not exchanging the the bishop this way but rather with queen on c7 now attacking the bishop and uh, threatening also take that that annoying pawn so we have bishop on d6 queen on d6 and you know first part of the plan exchanging the dark square bishop magnus carlsen uh did and now he gonna make the minority attack on the on the queen side and i choose this game because you know minority attack is the is the very thematic uh, motif which every player especially if you play d4 it's it should know should know because you have three pawns against your two pawns on the queen side uh, so definitely black gonna do the majority attack but you can do a minority attack first and I will show you the idea. So first castle, castle, and now queen on b3. It looks like, you know, uh, you cannot move the pawns now. However, this is part of the plan. So uh, what is the idea of minority attack? Exchange the pawns. This would be, the you know, the, the best if you can exchange these pawns. Uh, and leave black with this weakness. A backward pawn backward pawn which can be attacked from the from the front and also it cannot move to c5 because it's controlled by the pawn and sometimes other pieces so this is the idea this is why we have queen on b3 first so uh, attacking b7 and now if black gonna play b5 then this weakness is already there so this is why Fabiano Caruana goes for rook a on b8 and now a4 making a space for the queen we have rook f on e8 and now queen a3 as planned asking maybe you would like to you know exchange the queens this is the queen is the last piece which can easily control the the dark squares so Magnus want to exchange the queens as well uh, Fabiano uh, is not happy about that so we have queen on c7 and now rook f on c1 so uh, bringing the rook to the semi-open file and now uh, strengthening the control on c5 square so now this pawn cannot attack easily we have knight on b6 with the idea probably to jump on c4 however after b4 fabiano didn't go for that didn't go for that this actually wouldn't be so bad move uh this knight is quite safe over there okay uh, taking the, the 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 knight wouldn't be so great for 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 white because yes e4 is possible but this center is very shaky so white would have to you know go back with the rooks to to attack in the center and it of course cost a lot of moves and uh, black would have these four pawns against these two so it wouldn't be so bad for black actually so knight on c4 and probably queen would go on b3 and the game could continue we have rook on a8 this move is against a b5 move however magnus found another way to continue the minority attack and he play a5 kicking the knight and now knight on c4 is possible however not as great as before because we have already uh, the pawn on a5 which controls for example uh, b6 square and this pawn cannot you know go there easily to b5 to to support the the knight or the pawn on c4 so we have knight on c8 and now look at this b5 by magnus carlsen he continued his attack and it looks quite counterintuitive to go on the on the square controlled by the pawns okay however everything is fine with this uh, a takes on b5 knight on b5 and of course the knight cannot be taken because of the pin so uh, queen on d8 now knight is in the danger so knight on c3 so second part of the plan um, is just executed and now what magnus want to do is exchange these pawns 
and then this is gonna be the weakness. So uh, we have knight on d6, Fabiano Caruana tries to play on the, on the light squares, however now we have queen on b4, looking at b7. Uh, however, it's defended for now, so probably Fabiano Caruana could go for something like knight, knight f on e4 and after exchanging d takes on e4, this knight would have to retreat, so for example knight on d2, uh, f5, and I think position of black is, is difficult, definitely is difficult, but it's also some counterplay on the on the king side is possible, especially this bishop is not the pawn anymore, uh, it controls this diagonal, so uh, defending the king maybe can be also active on the, on the queen side. However, uh, we have queen on e7, uh, defending b7, so now both of the knights, you know, can move somewhere. Uh, we have a6, so exchanging the, the pawns, of course, b takes on a6, rook on a6, Fabiano Caruana goes for it, exchange the rooks, and now rook on a8, uh, and bishop on f1. So let's see what just happened. We have this clear backward weakness. Um, knight on c8 by Fabiano Caruana, queen on b2, so consolidating, remaneuvering some pieces, and now knight on d7, preparing the move c5, however, it's not so easy, because knight on e2, e, e, and you cannot really play this c5 move, okay, c5 move, uh, after d takes on c5, you are in lost position, you even cannot take this pawn, okay, if you take the pawn, then queen on b4, uh, winning the material, okay, this is the this is the pin double attack if you move the knight the problem is rook on c8 and you're gonna lose the queen okay so here is here is the problem uh so we have rook on b8 by fabiano caruana attacking the the queen uh, queen on c3 now attacking um, the pawn on c6 and now rook b6 Queen on a5, attacking the rook, however, rook is defended for now, however, it's uh, it's very tricky position. Queen on d6, knight on f4, now attacking the bishop, okay, uh, and it looks like, you know, this bishop is pretty pa passive, why to uh, exchange it for the knight? Uh, but this is very good idea, after knight on e7, uh, exchanging and now creating another weakness with the pawn and you could ask okay if i take what if i take with the queen what would happen the problem is knight on e5 attacking this knight and this knight is a defender of the rook so you are in troubles if you move the rook for example to b8 the queen gonna harass your rook so queen on a7 let's say rook on d8 and the problem is queen c7 this queen gonna harass the rook everywhere uh, wherever it goes it's if, even it goes to 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 b8 to b3 to b2 doesn't really matter the queen gonna harass the rook and win the material uh, rook on c8 of course it's it's you know losing the the material so it's not possible to take with the with the queen we have f takes on e6 and now knight e5 so the same idea here uh, the only difference is rook on b8 is now controlled by the by the queen but still queen on a7 uh, and now knight on e5 d takes on e5 and you cannot take the pawn because your knight is hanging so queen on d8 uh, and now magnus plays bishop on e2 and here I think black had the last chance to, to actually play something like rook on a8 and after queen on b7, threefold repetition or if queen goes to c5 then the game could continue. However, as you see, these two weaknesses are very, very difficult to, to defend. It's, it's impossible to defend. You need to have some counterplay, but it's difficult also to find. Exchanging this light square bishop for the knight was a great pl plan by Magnus Carlsen and now light square bishop can easily attack these this pawns. However, we have king on h8, even worse move and now now uh, attacking these uh, weaknesses 
is even easier. So bishop on g4 immediately. And here, of course, you cannot play knight on f5. I mean, it, you can, but it's uh, but it doesn't help you at all because you're just simply gonna lose this pawn, then lose this pawn and lose the game. But Fabiano Caruana uh, tried to find some resources and he played knight on g6 and it's pretty tricky. For now, it's attack e5, but that's not the plan. Um, f4, of course, defending that and now the pawns are still under attack. Attack. We have rook on a8, queen on c5, uh, queen on e8. It looks like defending both of the pawns, but but definitely this pawn is attacked twice. So queen on c6, queen on c6, rook on c6, and now uh, d4, d4. So uh, white have to do something about that. Of course, this pawn defending f4 as well. E takes on d4. Knight takes on f4 and here is the, the end of this plan. It's It was quite sneaky to bring the knight here. And the plan is uh, if Magnus play, I don't know, you know, is he's, if he is like overconfident and he sees he already win. If he plays bishop on e6, here is the problem. Knight on e2 uh, and then knight d4 and that's probably gonna be a draw, okay? So pretty sneaky idea, okay? Extra pawn, uh, but I believe Fabiano Caruana could defend that and uh, this probably a draw. So that was last try, last trap by Fabiano Caruana, but Magnus Carlsen, of course, is um, too experienced and he simply kicked the knight. So we have g3. Knight on d3 uh, and only now bishop on e6. Rook on a1 with check, king g2, g6. Uh, bishop on c4 harassing the knight, now knight on b4. Uh, rook on c8, king g7 and now d5. And in this position, Fabiano Caruana resigned the game. Uh, so Magnus Carlsen got his point and I would like to show you the scores. So here we go, Magnus Carlsen uh, won his first mini match against Fabiano Caruana and now if Fabiano want to go to semi-finals, he has to win another two matches. This was two and a half to half, so three games only. Uh, Magnus won first two games and, and then he drew the, the last one. That was of course enough to win this mini match. And in the second mini match, Jan Nepomniachtchi uh, won against Vladislav Artemiev also two and a half to half. There was one disconnection, however, uh, that was of course enough um, to win the mini match and Vlad Artemiev has to win another two mini matches if he wants to get to semi-finals. And today we're gonna see another exciting games. Ding Liren against Hikaru Nakamura and Alexander Grishuk against Anish Giri. So stay tuned and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss another games press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one.